video. Hi, this is the Wizard Ozzy Buko coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center. And we are about to have right now the reading uh, from uh, Censored number 106 titled Free Market Capitalism is Dead by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And he is here right now to start the reading. It's often claimed by those calling themselves Christians that the United States is a Christian nation and that American-style capitalism is a gift from God. American capitalism is touted as the best of all economic systems. These misguided people never mention the economic system that will be in effect during the millennium, God's economic system, which is far different than the one we hold dear today. God and history portray our present economic system as an example of the gateway of life, the devil's economics. God's economic system, found throughout the Bible, is an example of the give way of life. The question then becomes, how can those calling themselves Christians not be aware of the stark difference between what is and what God commands? The Bible answer is that they are deceived, Revelation 12, verse 9. All through the Bible runs the refrain of providing for the poor, the widow, and orphans. Think for a moment. Who is God asking to do this providing? He who has two coats, or he who has none? American capitalism has always been beset by problems. How could it be otherwise? For an economic system built upon self-interest and greed, and which writes off the true producer of wealth, the worker. Focusing our attention on recent history, we find that since the time of Ronald Reagan, things have gotten worse. Wealth has been skewed upward toward those who already have. Economically, this results in a contraction of the economy because less money goes to the true consuming portion of the economy. For a very long time, those calling themselves Christians have swallowed the Republican lies about the economy and the Bible. These counterfeit Christians developed a disdain for the poor and an ass-kissing envy and deference toward the rich and powerful. These duped counterfeit Christians have applauded every Republican tax cut for the rich and every cut in necessary social programs for the poor and the needy. They have done just the opposite of what the, the Bible demands of a true Christian and they have gotten away with it for decades. They have used the social issues of abortion, sex, and gay marriage to rally their troops and have allowed a free hand to corrupt corporations and politicians and those on Wall Street. President Ronald Reagan claimed government was the problem. He wanted and got less government regulation, which resulted in the savings and loan scandals. Because of Republican deregulation fever, the taxpayers had to bail out the savings and loan industry. Deregulation fever continues to stalk us and has led to our present economic meltdown, our depression. Yes, we are in a depression, not a recession. Today, corporations and businesses that practice the get way of life that sought after ill-gotten gains are now begging the taxpayer to save their asses, to bail them out, socializing their costs and privatizing their gains, a form of socialism. Whenever right-wing conservative religious Republicans want to fire up their base and portray a foe as a traitor, or something worse, they call him a socialist, a Marxist, or a communist. What they really mean is not quite clear. A socialist is one who believes that the means of production should be owned by the state. That is, public ownership, you and me. What's so bad about that? 
What right-wingers really mean when they use the terms socialist, Marxist, and communist is totalitarianism. They believe socialism inherently involves secret police, prison camps, and dictatorship. What they don't realize is all of these can and do take place under capitalism also. What has emerged in America since the time of Franklin D. Roosevelt is a form of democratic socialism. There's nothing wrong with this form of socialism, and it works well in Europe. This type of socialism can be improved upon. Right-wingers use the term socialist as an insult, as an attack. And as it turns out, with many right-wing attack words, the way they use it has no validity at all. Are not all the bailouts and buy-ins being pursued by the United States Treasury right now forms of socialism? And is not it a fact that all these businesses seeking help from the government an indication that American capitalism is dead? The free market capitalism modeled on right-wing no taxes for the rich, tax breaks for corporations, and no regulation has turned out to be a failure just as supply-side economics was a failure back in the 1980s. Absolutely. There is not much that the right wing has ever been right about. Hmm. Of course, the right wing is blaming unions, homeowners, and the Democrat-controlled House for our financial meltdown. They will not face up to their deregulation mistakes. They won't face up to their repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act. <laughs> We've gone through tax cuts for the rich and big corporations every few years, and yet the economy only sputters along and has finally come to an abrupt halt. We kept hearing that the fundamentals of our economy were sound. They never were sound, and true inflation has been hidden from us. The voracious greed at the center of our economy was never mentioned by the right wing. In fact, it was applauded. The elites understood greed as the proper business model. In the last 28 years, deregulation ideologues have run rampant in Washington, D.C., pushing their laissez-faire fantasies on America. Bad law was piled upon bad law. Okay, so the Wizard Ozzy Buko, we are returning to the reading of uh, censored number uh, 106, uh, a Free Market uh, Capitalism is Dead, by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. Please continue. <clears throat> there was a worshipping of the market, the unshackled market, the free market. All of this was foisted on the American public, and these illusions hurt us and have run our economy into the ditch. Laissez-faire is smoke and mirrors. Delusions run wild and sanctioned by politics. Former Texas Senator Phil Graham was one of the devil's helpers who brought about the implosion of our economy. He was the chief economic advisor to Senator John McCain during his presidential campaign. Phil Graham advocates a kind of Rambo capitalism. In 1999, he pushed a bill through the Senate that got rid of the Glass-Steagall Act of 1933 that prohibited investment houses and insurance companies from combining into a single corporation. Thus, the crash of one wouldn't bring down the others. Banks like Citigroup loved the idea, but now... They needed a bailout from the taxpayers. The sanctimonious dupe, Phil Graham, is at the heart of our financial meltdown. On November the 12th, 1999, Phil Graham gloated over burying Glass-Steagall. Quote, We are here today to repeal Glass-Steagall because we have learned that government is not the answer. We have learned that freedom and competition are the answers. 
We have learned that we promote economic growth and we promote stability by having competition and freedom. I am proud to be here because this is an important bill. It is a deregulatory bill. I believe that's the wave of the future. I am awfully proud to have been a part of making it a reality." Unquote. In 2000, before leaving the Senate, Phil Graham had one more piece of the devil's economics to foist on Americans. At night, he slipped a provision into an 11,000-page appropriations bill that would not allow government to regulate or even monitor derivatives. By 2008, the derivatives market had grown to $531 trillion. In essence, these derivatives are secret investment schemes, and they now dominate our entire financial system. Most of these are based on subprime defaulted loans and are, in effect, worthless, causing the collapse of many investment businesses. All of this thanks to Phil Graham and the demon minions who supported his nutty economic ideas. Phil Graham never held a private sector job, and yet he had the nerve to call hard-working Americans whiners in regard to their hard times in this financial meltdown caused by, among others, Phil Graham. Ronald Reagan and Alan Greenspan in the 1980s shifted the tax burden from the wealthy to the working poor and the middle class. Through four presidencies, Greenspan fought against any oversight by the Federal Reserve. He fell in love with derivatives. He was a hardcore, laissez-faire ideologue. He hated government, until recently, when he admitted that there was a need for government regulation. No longer was government an evil force. However, his enlightenment comes a bit late. His delusions hurt a lot of people. Greenspan had an almost religious faith in the innate good will and moral superiority of investors and bankers. He trusted them to do the right thing. He lacked even a modicum of understanding regarding human nature, human greed. His faith was that of a quasi-religious nut. At Goldman Sachs, Henry Paulson made billions of dollars in brokerage fees by packaging and selling derivatives. He too is a true believer in deregulation, and now he's in charge of the bailout. It seems that so far, all the big money has gone to the same crooks that sabotaged the American economy. Hmm. Our tax money is being doled out with no strings attached. As usual, we are making the rich richer and thumbing our nose at the poor. On April 28, 2004, <laughs> as head of the Security and Exchange Commission, William Donaldson, caused a rule change to provide an exemption to bankers, allowing them not to keep on hand reserve funds, which might be used to cover losses. The bankers wanted to invest all that money in derivatives. Are we seeing a pattern here? The banks also could monitor, monitor their level of risk. All this destruction to our economy merely as a result of ideology and faith. As Security and Exchange Commission Chairman in 2005, Christopher Cox weakened the ability to investigate violations of the enforcement staff. <coughs> Wall Street was left to run wild. He eliminated an office that had been set up to watch for future problems concerning high-risk investments and derivatives. When the economy melted down, Christopher Cox came up with this brilliant, after-the-fact morsel, quote, Voluntary regulation does not work. 
Wow. <laughs> After decades of Republican deregulation and laissez-faire fever, the Republicans are blaming the Democrats for our economy being in the dumps. The Democrats have been in charge in the House for less than two years. Did the Republicans expect the Democrats to fix all the Republican mistakes in less than two years? What has come to light is that laissez-faire, free market capitalism, is a crock. The financial meltdown is a direct result of laissez-faire fraud that was imposed on the United States. There is no such thing as the free market. The free market is snake oil, sold to us by flim-flam operators. Without oversight and regulation, there is no honest economy. Deregulation paved the way for greed, fraud, and theft, and our economy was stripped clean like a Thanksgiving turkey. And now, we have socialism from Wall Street and to hell with Main Street. Very few economic experts saw this financial crisis coming, yet now these same experts are in charge and making up the remedies as they go. It has now become clear to non-blind experts that left to its own devices, our entire financial system will not work and can be brought to its knees by greed. The system is corrupt. During the recent presidential election, we heard a lot about redistribution of wealth. Mm. It was called socialism, Marxism, communism. Mm. It was not made clear that all politics that deviate from the economic status quo redistribute wealth. Excuse me. Yes. Let's hold that place for one second. We have uh, take a 10, ten second uh, break here. Well, <clears throat> okay, continuation. Uh, newsletter censored 106. Uh, free market capitalism is dead by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. This is the Wizard Ozzy Buko. In the last 30 years, there has been a massive redistribution of wealth from everybody else up to the top 1% of Americans. <laughs> this redistribution of wealth was a deliberate result of policy changes, tax code changes, and changes in laws that distribute social power between capital and labor and changes in America's trade relationships. All of these moved money from everyone else to the rich. Of course, right-wing apologists will claim that these are not examples of redistribution, they are merely the natural order of things. That is not what the Bible says. Today, Alan Greenspan is in a state of shock disbelief and is calling for tougher government regulations. He's now aware that he made a mistake in believing that banks that operated in their own self-interest would do what was necessary to protect their shareholders and the institutions themselves. It was a flaw in his model of how the world works. None of this helps those people whose homes are in foreclosure. And of course, the executives got away with their huge bonuses. And of course, Republicans were helpless in being <laughs> unable to influence events, even though they were in control of the government. As mentioned previously, right-wingers constantly claim that America is a Christian nation. They blame liberals and Democrats for taking God out of our social life. But in fact, it has been right-wingers, Republicans, who have brought this country to its knees. What these self-righteous counterfeit Christians have forgotten is that evil is present in them too. These Bible thumpers forgot that they are worms in the sight of God. Job 25 verses 4 through 6 they too could do wrong, and they did. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were provided for. Genesis 2, verse 3. They had everything they needed to sustain life, to learn, and to grow. God never intended that his creation slave his life away 
to make someone else rich. God intended, as he makes clear in the Bible, those parts that right-wingers don't read, that each human own his own land, and to never lose it, even if sold, and to have his own way of making a living. God never intended humans to live from paycheck to paycheck with no security. God never intended values to change. God wanted humans to be content with contentment. The United States has been dependent, has been made dependent, excuse me, on foreigners for its national security as a result of the free market. God has prophesied that this will be the ruin of the United States. Deuteronomy 28, 43 through 44 and 52. Lamentations 2, verses 17 through 20. A society grows rich by producing things and saving money. Does anyone have a savings account right now? What the hell is an interest rate of 0.75%? <laughs> During the U.S. Revolutionary War, the United States had to rely on other nations for supplies of military equipment, and the British and Britain cut off supplies to America. Self-sufficiency was compromised then, and it is today. Nations mean nothing to the God of the Bible, Isaiah 40, 15 through 17. And true leaders are to serve citizens before themselves, Matthew 20, 25 through 27. Do we have true leaders today? Look at Isaiah 3, verses 1 through 4. How can we be called a Christian nation when our current financial meltdown is a mockery of the God of the Bible's give way of life? Luke 3, 10 through 11, clearly spells out the duties of a true Christian. That is, he who has two coats, share with him that has no coat. And he that has plenty of food, let him learn to share with those who are hungry. Because of idolatry, that is, having the wrong God, the God of the Bible is going to break America's will. Leviticus 26, 19 through 20. Those who participated in the United States financial meltdown lacked empathy. They were driven by self-interest and greed. There was no Christianity involved. The Ten Commandments forbid competition, strife, and envy. Our present economic model is a scam and benefits only a small minority. Debt keeps the United States functioning. The Dow Jones has gone nowhere in 40 years. The sinking dollar has wiped out all returns from the stock market. Business practices in America run on greed and corruption. It cannot be stressed too often. The financial meltdown exposed the corrupt foundation of American capitalism. America is dying. Until the 1980s, the United States was the world's largest creditor nation. In one generation, the United States has become the world's largest debtor nation. America's days as the global economic kingpin are over. Economic leadership is now rising again in Europe. Because of greed, lying, stealing, coveting, we need regulation. We need a fair financial playing field. We need referees. <coughs> Proverbs 28, verse 20 warns that he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Today, Harvard Business School is turning out amoral strivers who are willing to sacrifice family and friends for the success they felt they so richly deserved. Absolutely. The financial meltdown is an example of a moral collapse. And the Bible makes it clear that all humans were meant to prosper, not just CEOs. John 10, verse 10, and 3 John 2, Job 42, 10, Genesis 32, 2, 3, Leviticus 26, 3, 5, Deuteronomy 8 through 18, 
and Ecclesiastes 5.19. Since we cannot do away with greed, lying, and stealing, we need oversight regarding our financial system. These are truisms that any right-thinking individual would understand. Only the blind, deceived, and corrupt would call for no regulation. The stakes need to be corrected, or no learning takes place. Corruption needs to be punished. Evil cannot speak good things. Matthew 12, verse 34. It should be clear to all by now that the apologists for corruption in our free market capitalistic system who claimed that they were rich because God wanted it that way <laughs> were liars and fakes. Yes. They touted their piety while they stole from you and me. They claimed character when they had none. And the problem was their lies were believed. We the people put up no obstacles to their ethereal theories and their fake religiosity. And all the while, they were plotting and bringing about the destruction of our economy and this once great nation. And now we suffer and bail them out. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you, well, lost, you lost another, another argument, argument with a conservative, conservative right-wing right -wing Republican. Republican. He, he talked, talked over you. you. He, screamed he screamed and yelled. yelled. He brought he out the Bible. Bible. He thumped he it. it. He quoted he scripture, scripture to you. you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read Censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read Censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every, Every time, time you get, you get into, into an, an argument, argument with a right-wing right conservative, conservative uh, so-called so Christian. Christian. Censored. Censored. That's, That's all you need. need. Read, Read it. it. And, and defeat a conservative. conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest-hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. <laughs>